Niranjananda Swami, Chinna Swami. A great saint called Tirchi Swami once blessed and guided me. He said, For spiritual fulfillment, one should possess a heart that is soft as a rose petal and as hard and impenetrable as a piece of iron. The seeker should use the iron heart while dealing with the world. Worldly activities should be performed with non-attachment and with the clear determination that any work one undertakes, either on a daily or long-term basis, should be completed irrespective of any problem that may arise. For this, what is most needed is perseverance. On the other hand, the spiritual seeker should use the rose petal heart for total selfless surrender and service to the guru. In addition, such a seeker should melt with devotion to attain the truth and also help others to grasp the essence of the master's teaching. Patience is most needed for this. He added, keep both sides of the coin within you, perseverance and patience. Niranjananda Swami's total dedication and devotion to Bhagavan was the expression of his rose petal heart. While the boldness with which he bore the burden of managing the ashram, despite all problems and opposition, showed his iron heart. In the Hindu scriptures, whenever God came to earth as an avatar like Rama or Krishna, he came with his brothers. In Rama and Krishna's case, it was Lakshmana and Balarama, respectively. Even saints like Janeshwar Maharaj and Ramakrishna Paramahansa had brothers. These brothers perhaps might not have been perfect beings, Yet the avatars and saints accepted them and corrected their flaws along the way. Their brothers were important in their mission of spreading virtue and goodness in the world and therefore played an important role in the divine drama. Likewise, Bhagavan kept his brother Nirajananda Swami unconditionally by his side. It is important that when we look at the brothers of great saints, we see them with an unbiased mind. This is because while they might have committed mistakes, they were significant in the larger divine plan. Bhagavan had two brothers and one sister, an elder brother Nagaswami, a younger brother Nanga Sundaram, and a younger sister Alamalu. When their father Sundaram Ayer passed away, the family was split up. Nagaswami and Venkataraman, the future Ramana, came to Manarai, while Mother Azagamal took Nagasundaram and Alamalu to her brother-in-law's house in another town in Mana Madurai. At the age of 16, Bhagavan had the death experience and moved to Arunachala. In 1902, the family traced Bhagavan to Arunachala. Naga Sundaram came to see his elder brother. Bhagavan was then known as Brahmana Swami and was living in Sadguru Swami Cave, which is located below Virupaksha Cave. When Naga Sundaram saw his elder brother in ascetic attire and in total silence, he embraced him and wept. He observed that his elder brother was not subject to emotions anymore. Bhagavan remained in silence and Nagasundaram felt that he should stay with him and help. But Bhagavan knew that Nagasundaram had many worldly commitments and so, even though he offered to stay, Bhagavan did not reply. A disappointed Nagasundaram came back home. 
We do not have too many details about Nagasundaram's boyhood or later years. We know that he got married and got a job as a clerk. Then a series of unfortunate incidences started taking place in his life. His eldest brother, Nagaswami, died suddenly when he was only 20 years old. Within a short span, their ancestral property was auctioned off and they lost everything. Nagasundaram also lost his wife suddenly, leaving behind a little boy who was my father, T. N. Venkataraman. Nagasundaram's only source of comfort was his mother, Azigamal, but she too had gone away to Arunachala to stay with Bhagavan. These incidents shocked him and drove him to a state of surrender, submission, and service. He gave up whatever he had left, including his son, who he left with his sister. At that time, like an oasis of hope, his mother sent word for him to come and live with her and Bhagavan. Thus, he left for Arunachala and Bhagavan accepted him, perhaps due to his mother's influence. Mother Azagamal told her ascetic son, My third son, Nagasundaram, is not very intelligent. He is a little rough and tough, and it is very hard for him to live in the world. You have to take care of him. Bhagavan obeyed her and only later revealed the purpose of supporting his brother all through. T.P. Ramachandra Ayer told me that once there was an altercation in the management and Nirajananda Swami was involved in it. That day, while going up the hill, Bhagavan repeatedly muttered under his breath, What can I do? I have given my word. Ramachandra Ayer could not understand and asked, Bhagavan, what are you saying? And Bhagavan replied, When my brother came here, my mother took an assurance from me that I will not leave him, and I will protect him and keep him here with me. What can I do? When Nagasundaram came to Skanda Ashram, having been beaten by life's trials, he too became an ascetic. He took to austere living and begged in the streets of Tirvanamalai for food. By that time, Ramana Maharshi had written Who Am I? and the five hymns on Arunachala. These were the popular texts on which devotees meditated or sang from. Nagasundaram contemplated, studied, and lived a reclusive life. Ganapati Muni had already named and glorified Brahmana Swami as Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi. When Ganapati Muni met Nagasundaram, he could see that Bhagavan was paying attention to him. He too, therefore, wanted to assist in saving him. Why don't you take the traditional step of taking sannyas and donning the okra robes, he suggested. Ganapati Muni, or Nayana, also gave Nagasundaram the name Nirajananda Swami, meaning an immaculate person. Given the complicated name, everybody started calling him Chinna Swami, meaning Junior Swami, as Bhagavan, his elder brother, was the Senior Swami. When Asagamal passed away, Chinna Swami was among those who carried her body down the hill and brought it to the thorny, bushy place, which is now Ramana Ashramam. With the help from the others, he buried her body in the samadhi. Ganapati Muni insisted that Chinnaswami perform the puja for it. As was customary, a lingam was placed over her body. But while this is usually taken off after some time, they let it remain there. Ganapati Muni said, You must perform puja with all rituals, because this is not just a tomb. It is a temple, since Bhagavan has liberated your mother, and she is no more an ordinary person. She is God. Nayana, or Kavyakantha, as Ganapati was knew, known by, 
named the temple Matru Bhustiswara, meaning God in the form of mother. In this way, Chinnaswami was influenced to stay there and do puja every day while Bhagavan stayed on in Skanda Ashram. One day, Chinnaswami sent word to Bhagavan that he was going to make dosas the next day. It was considered a delicacy, and he said he would bring it to Skanda Ashram. Early the next morning, Chinnaswami heard a sweet voice asking, Is there any food for Anathitha? And that Anathitha means a wayfarer or guest. It was none other than Bhagavan. Identify himself as a guest. <laughs> 